Think you're suffering now? Just wait. We talk a lot about suffering, in particular shared suffering. The Warfighter Nation understands that all too well. But when suffering is expected, it loses some of its power and its element of surprise. The Bible explains how we few, the remnant, are here to help pull others out of the fire and lead them to Jesus. We know we can count on one another because we've seen each other at our best and our worst, and somehow, you cannot tell the difference. That's love. We honor the fallen legends in our community, and rightfully so. But allow me to enlighten you about the fate of a few of my personal heroes. The disciples. Matthew suffered martyrdom in Ethiopia, killed by a sword wound. Mark died in Alexandria, Egypt, after being dragged by horses through the streets until he was dead. Luke was hanged in Greece as a result of his tremendous preaching to the lost. Peter was crucified upside down on an X-shaped cross, according to church tradition, because he told his tormentors that he felt unworthy to die in the same manner that Jesus Christ had died. James, the leader of the church in Jerusalem, was thrown over a hundred feet down from the southeast pinnacle of the temple when he refused to deny his faith in Christ, the same pinnacle where Satan had taken Jesus during the temptation. When they discovered that he survived the fall, his enemies beat him to death with a fuller's club. Bartholomew, also known as Nathaniel, was a missionary to Asia. He witnessed for our Lord in present-day Turkey. Bartholomew was martyred for his preaching in Armenia where he was flayed to death by a whip. James, the son of Zebedee, was a fisherman by trade when Jesus called him to a lifetime of ministry. As a strong leader of the church, James was beheaded at Jerusalem. The Roman officer who guarded James watched amazed as James defended his faith at his trial. Later, the officer walked beside James to the place of execution. Overcome by conviction, he declared his new faith to the judge and knelt beside James to accept beheading as a Christian. Andrew was crucified on an X-shaped cross in Patras, Greece. After being whipped severely by seven soldiers, they tied his body to the cross with cords to prolong his agony. His followers reported that when he was led toward the cross, Andrew saluted it in these words, I have long desired and expected this happy hour. The cross has been consecrated by the body of Christ hanging on it. He continued to preach to his tormentors for two days until he expired. Thomas was stabbed with a spear in India during one of the missionary trips to establish the church in the subcontinent. Jude was killed with arrows when he refused to deny his faith in Christ. Matthias, the apostle chosen to replace the traitor Judas Iscariot, was stoned and then beheaded. Paul was tortured and then beheaded by the evil emperor Nero in Rome in AD 67. Paul endured a lengthy imprisonment which allowed him to write his many letters to the churches he had formed throughout the Roman Empire. These letters, which taught many of the foundational doctrines of Christianity, form a large portion of the New Testament. And last but certainly not least, my man John. He faced martyrdom when he was boiled in a huge basin of boiling oil during a wave of persecution in Rome. However, he was miraculously delivered from death. John was then sentenced to the mines on a prison island of Patmos. He wrote his prophetic book of Revelation on Patmos. The Apostle John was later freed and returned to serve as Bishop of Edessa in modern-day Turkey. He died as an old man, the only apostle to die peacefully. This is a reminder for us that our sufferings here are indeed minor compared to the intense persecution and cold cruelty faced by the apostles and disciples during their times. 
Jesus told us for the sake of the faith, and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Now you just heard what happened to them, but make no mistake, that's not the story that was told to the people. They were mocked, lied about, attacked, slandered, spoken of in the most loathsome of ways, both during imprisonment and after their deaths. It's like they say, it will get worse before it gets better. Take heed now, my friends, so you can stay strong when the day of battle comes. My fellow warfighters, the days of dying a noble death for God and country on a foreign battlefield are behind some of us. That time is now past. Now, the very best that we few, we happy few, can hope for is to one day give our lives for our faith. It is foretold that many will. Now I've spent my whole life fighting on my feet, finally coming to realize that the greatest weapon of war is the sword of the spirit. And fighting on my knees is both righteous and honorable. Read, study, and know God's word. Know it, carry it with you. Store it in your heart so that no one can ever take it from you. We will fight again, my friends, differently this time, but a battle worthy of our being sent here. You are here for a reason. God knows what he's doing. So when everything's hitting the fan and nothing's going your way, just remember, they hated him first. John 15, 25. Well, that's it for this message. You've got your spiritual chow. Ooh, Ron's gonna get away from these javelina. Next mission, time now. Chopper 7. Roger that. Next mission, time now.